Welcome to my studio. I'm Del Rock Edwards, the clay guy. I make things out of clay, and I show other people how to do it too, because it's a lot of fun. I'm fixing to go inside and get busy. Why don't you come in and join me? Come on in. Hey guys, welcome to the Claywright Workshop. We're going to do something really unusual today. I've been looking forward to bringing in something new and unusual. And here it is right here. Now, if you look at these two creatures here, this is a big one and this is the little one. This man is just full of useful information, right? And you're wondering, what if the Claywright Workshop is going to teach me what valuable insight, what new skills will I learn today? Okay, I'll give you just a moment to look at these and guess what they are because many people guess different things. What we have here is a donkey that has gone to college. This graduation hat, which is correctly called a mortarboard, and this is the tassel. You put it over one way before you graduate, and then you put it the other way after you graduate. When a donkey goes to college, he becomes a smart ass. Now, I'm not trying to use vulgar terms. Ass is the correct word for a donkey. All right, sometimes known as a jackass or shortened to ass. The word donkey itself, we believe, comes from the word don, which means gray or brown in color. But they were sometimes, when they grew in the wild, they were called wild asses. And of course, when they go to college, then they would, of course, be a smart ass. Now, you can put a dunce hat on it, and then it would be a dumb donkey. Or you can put a hat on backwards, smoke a cigar, and we call it a bad donkey. Uh, and at Christmas time, we don't give it the mortar board, but we stick the uh, horns in it and hang little red balls off of it, and it becomes a reindeer. Now, it's a relatively simple shape to make. I've told you how to make several animals that are very similar to this, and I'm going to show you here. And as usual, we're going to start in the beginning. We're going to go over to the drawing board and do this correctly. Now, the major shape is going to be the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll a cylinder. This is one of the standard shapes that all artists are familiar with. Then we're going to close it up at both ends, and one end will be bigger and one end smaller, not unlike an egg. That's the major shape. Then we're going to alter that shape and make it narrow and wide, representing the head and body. All right. Then we're going to alter the shape yet once again. So it's going to be wide on the bottom, and it's going to come up, and it's going to bend down. And that's going to be the buttocks area. This is the head up here with the nostrils. And then we're going to add the minor shapes, which will be the legs and hooves and the front legs the other leg, of course a tail, but now we're into detail when we'll add just a little bit of mane and the ears and the big smile. We all love that big smiling donkey. All right? So let's get started. All right? A good place to start is always the beginning. So we're going to start with the major shape. Now we're going to use white earthenware. And this is some new stuff. I used paper clay last month in teaching the kids some stuff, but that was making large projects that I wanted to be lighter. Now I've cut a slab, and it's obviously square. So step one is going to be to round the shape and make the cylinder that I drew over there with the blue ink. Now, this literally took 10 seconds. I would try to make this look harder, but I probably couldn't fool you. Then I'm going to make it flat on both ends. So it legitimately is a cylinder, one of your primary shapes, all right? Now, I'm going to take this tool here that we call a proctology stick because what we do is we go right up the bottom of the clay. Notice uh, I'm slowly turning this shaft, and I tried to come out the center. Now, by putting pressure on both ends, I'll hollow this out, and it now will become a tube. Now, I'm trying to do this as consistently as possible so my walls inside will be nice and consistent, all right? And 
I was relatively successful. See there? Now, I always make jokes to the children. If you look through here, you'll see something wonderful, all right? And that's because you do need to check and make sure that it's totally hollow. Now, as I mentioned again on the blue drawing, I'm going to close up both ends, so we're going to trap air inside. This is going to be actually a clay balloon, all right? I'm closing this up. This sometimes is called a pinch pot because you pinch it, but this was unusual, like a lead zeppelin, all right, silly word, so is clay balloon, all right? But now it truly is a clay balloon. Now I've done that so that the air inside will give me back pressure, okay? Now, the buttocks, the bottom, the butt where the stubborn donkey sits on his butt and refuses to move is here. So I squeeze in, I'm manipulating this shape. The air is keeping it from collapsing. This represents the buttocks, all right? So now I squeeze again, and I have kind of a pyramid snowman shape, three major shapes, and this is his chest area that you see here. Now, this part up here, I'm going to manipulate or alter the shape and make the head and the neck. All right, and that's simple enough. So you will know that this is the bottom. We'll put the butt crack of dawn right there. So now we know for sure you can tell that's the bottom, right? Okay, now, because this guy give his seat up, bring it over here. This is kind of where we're going to be on the major shapes, because this is obviously the biggest shape. It represents the whole body. And now, you notice it's pointing straight up. I'm going to alter it. Bend it over, all right? The donkey has a rather flat snout. When the, earlier I mentioned the stubborn po uh, position or pose, but I just read in doing research for this that donkey's reputation for stubborn is not really earned. It's when handlers that don't realize the intellect of a donkey, and donkeys will not do things that have a very strong sense of self-preservation. So if you try to get them to go down a rocky ledge that they know the rocks are loose and they'll fall, they will get down and be stubborn and not go there or any other place that would be dangerous to their well-being where horses and other animals that aren't that smart would go wherever they're led. The miners love donkeys because they were very loyal and they could lead the donkeys and they would follow the miners without being pulled by a rope because of their sense of loyalty. Right? Miners, 49ers, they love the donkeys. Now, I'm going to alter the shape again. I'm going to put the jawbone of the ass. I think it's a biblical story about somebody using the jawbone of an ass to destroy a lot of enemies. Now, jawbone of an ass makes me a lot of enemies. Okay, they get elected. All right, now, there is a basic face shape with the neck. I'm going to use my hand to pinch and back, or later they have a very small mane. And I'll go ahead and set it up. Now, the head wants to fall over. It's a little bit limp. So I'm going to leave it pointing up because once it starts, it'll keep going, which I don't want to happen. I'll use my favorite tool. And I'm going to go in here and make the nostrils. Now, I hope you guys got a relatively good close-up on that because it was so simple to do. Those were the nostrils. Now, it's symmetrical, so I'll put my finger in the middle Use my other finger, I'm dissecting, coming together at a right angle. I'm going to put in the eye socket, okay? Now, the domesticated ass is about 4,000 years B.C. when they were first domesticated in Egypt, all right? And they can carry 20 to 30 percent of their body weight. So you see this little bitty donkey carrying a whole lot of weight. All right, now I don't have the tool I want. Hot dang, I do have the tool I want. I love this tool. It's a very narrow, square little tool. And what I'm going to do is give it that big smile because donkeys or smart asses always have a big smile. Here we go. I'm going to wrap around, and I don't know how good you guys can see this, but he's got a great big smile now. Now, I'm gonna, the reason I was so happy to find this tool, it didn't get lost over here, is it's exactly the size I want, and I'm going to come around, and I'm going to give this guy these great big teeth, that big uh, smart-ass grin, and the second 
the ledge. Oh, man, that worked out great. That makes the lower lip, etc. Now, I'm not going to get into the other details about the ears and so forth now because, like I mentioned, this head's a little weak. While the head's setting up, I'm going to move over, as I mentioned on my board, to my minor shapes, which will be the legs, front and back. All right, so here I go on that. I'll grab a small portion of clay here. You know, I've all heard me say, and I, one of the few things that, one of the few sins that I commit, is short list, is redundancy. I, I repeat myself quite often, and it's because I'm dealing with uh, a natural resistance to receive information. I'm dealing with right brain people, and their creativity, when you're saying something, they're thinking of exceptions to what you said or how the rule doesn't affect them. And they're not like left brain people that sit there and take notes and listen and follow directions. Yes, sir. 10 hut, forward march, one, two, three, four. The right band people doing the hokey pokey. Yes, but left foot in, left foot out, shake it all about. And it takes them a while to move forward. So I have to be redundant and keep repeating myself until I can get them moving in a direction. All right, what I'm going to do now is somebody says you can't herd turtles. I think that might be right. Okay. And I rolled a coil. I started out square. I let my hands go across the top. Now I have rolled literally hundreds and hundreds of miles of coal, so it's easy for me to do. Now, I want two legs the same size. So I do that, and now I have two the same size. And that would be about the right size leg for the donkey, but just like humans, the leg is bigger at the top and it slowly tapers till it goes down to the hoof. So I'm gonna alter this shape again. And I want it a little bigger at the top and narrower at the bottom, kind of like a carrot. See this? Now, I don't know how good you can see this, because this is Boku easy, and I'm going to do it as slow as I can. I'm going to grab it toward the bottom, leaving that little bit hanging out. You see that? Then when I push down, that bottom hoof is flat, and that gives me my hoof. Then I'm going to take the edge of this stick, and if this were a knife, that would be the cutting edge. I was teasing some students this morning that you can't have knives on, in school anymore because they're seen as weapons. I think the next they'll start taking out the tools, like hammers and screwdrivers. Here we go. I go around. The hoof is big in front, small in back. Now, because of that stubborn, famous donkey squat down, you can't make me do something that my brain says is dangerous. I am going to take this and do a Z like Zorro. If I do this right, I got to go back, forward, and back again. So there's the hoof, back, forward, back again. There's the hip, and that's just about right. That's the shape I was looking for. You may see it over here on the smaller donkeys, all right? Now I got to do it again. Uh, I find a lot of people, when they do a shape, like an ear, or a hand or thumb, they're very lucky the first time and the thought of doing it again just depresses them because even Da Vinci didn't do a second Mona Lisa and Michelangelo didn't do a second David because once you've done that you want to move on and do something new. You want more creativity than discipline. Now I gotta watch out, I keep making jokes about the joy of dyslexia because you'll make two right legs or two left ones really easy. So this time I'm gonna let it face back the other way face that way, come back, come forward, come back down, and flatten it. That makes my two hips. Now I'm going to taper so they come in. You see the taper? When I mention taper, you see my hands like this? That's taper. We know to score and slip, these are terms we're all familiar with, those of you that watch my program on a regular basis. Right now it's coming on every other Saturday night, so it's pretty easy to keep up, and being right brain artists, we don't have anything else to do on Saturday night except make things out of clay. All right. This is the water, scoring and slipping. Okay. Now, see how it kind of tucks up under the body there? Little foot comes that way. Lots of really cool jokes about donkeys and burros. George Washington was the first to import them into America, called them Jack, and Lafayette gave him a prized donkey. I just read that. I thought that was uh, 
so cool. And of course, Washington was really big about uh, horticulture, as was Jefferson, and they breeded animals. Benjamin Franklin also was very fond of breeding exotic uh, animals. I always love the story that Benjamin Franklin wanted the uh, turkey to be our national symbol and not the eagle. He called it a glorified peacock. Thought the turkey was a smarter, stronger animal. All right, there is his rear legs. Now, I gotta give it those front legs when he does his stubborn thing, you ain't gonna make me do something against my will. And it's funny, we use that term a lot about stubborn when somebody digs in their heels, and that's exactly what the donkey does. And I was very surprised when I read that it was a high IQ situation where he would not do something dangerous to himself. Self-preservation is the strongest emotion that we have, all right? That's what's kept me from being a liberal Democrat. All right, now I am going to tear that because that's about the size I want. And we'll use that. I just had a really big commission for a large international company. I had to make a piece of architecture for a, a large house. And it was something that fit on both sides of a window on the third floor, and it weighed over a ton. And I had to do one that fit on the left and curved one way, and one that fit on the right and curved the other. And it was fun doing the first one, but I had to do the next one exactly backward. So it, like I said, the, the joy of dyslexia. All right, there we go. I have a matching pair of legs. So now I push down to get the hoof. You remember that trick? I get narrow for the fetlock. I've always been impressed with horses. They have this massive weight and strength, and they have this little bitty narrow wrist called the fetlock and all the weight comes down on that little bitty bone. Of course, I've seen ballerinas and men dancers also that could just raise up and just be on the tips of their toes. Uh, it's funny, animals do dances too, mating dances. Uh, animals doing mating dances are very interesting. When you see adults do mating dances, it's not pretty, okay? I've seen it at clubs, it is not pretty. Okay, here comes the other hoof. I read this neat joke about donkey. Preacher had a donkey, and he sold it. And the guy bought it, because, you know, preachers are honest. He was glad to get it. Preacher says, yeah, this is a really good donkey, hard worker, good donkey. But since he was my donkey, I taught him that um, amen means stop, and hallelujah means go. And the guy said, that's pretty cool. So he buys the donkey, and he's taking it home on this precarious mountain road. And the donkey is going toward the edge of a cliff, and he forgot what stop meant. He'd forgotten. Amen. Amen means stop. Hallelujah means go. He'd been playing and practicing, but he forgot. And he's getting scared. The donkey's coming to the cliff. So all of a sudden he figures he can't do anything. So he just starts saying a prayer. Dear Jesus, please don't let this donkey walk me off a cliff. And right when the donkey got to the edge of the cliff, he said, Amen. And the donkey stopped. And he was so happy, he said, Hallelujah. And then it didn't work out good. Okay, here we go. While I was telling the joke, I made the other hoof and I scored and slipped so it would fit to the chest. I have a, a nasty habit of telling these jokes because if I don't, I usually am in a room full of people and the right brain creative ones are explained to me because they're all psychic what I really meant and what I should have said and I get caught up in the spider web that is their mind and I can't give them information because they're too busy sharing feelings. So I found that if I tell jokes or trivia, it distracts them enough and their left hemisphere, their brain, can watch what I'm doing and learn while the right hemisphere is explaining to me that I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, they can go in both directions at the same time with equal speed. It's a gift that right brain people have. I can have my cake and eat it too. Okay. I didn't hear what you said, but I can tell you how you're wrong. All right. Now, this guy's coming along pretty good. Here's our basic body. Of course, if it were a horse, it would have a bigger mane and other sizes. And I gave it a big old booty so it would have a good bottom and not fall over. And now we've done the major shapes and minor shapes. We're down to the details. So if my time will allow me, we'll get over here. I'll use a uh, green pen for detail. The detail is going to be the ears, the eyes, we already did the nostrils, and we gave it the big old smile, the lower lip there. And now we got to give it the tail, a little bit of mane here, 
and we're going to give it the graduation hat, i.e. a mortarboard. It fits on your head. Some of you may have graduated from something before, all right? And the, the tassel hangs down over here like this. So this is what we'll do next, the details. Eyes, ears, nose, tail, mane, and the mortarboard. If time allows. I have a sense of timing, but it's been thrown off recently. Okay, here we go. This guy's looking pretty good. He's got some attitude. Okay, now, we all know the eye trick. Those of, my, those of you that watch the show, you know you roll a ball, tear it in two so you have two equal balls, and we put them in the eye sockets. Bam, there's the eye sockets. I'll touch it up here with this simple tool. How do you like that for eyes, okay? Here come the ears. Equally as easy. This is what we call a mustache, all right? Fat in the middle, skinny on both ends. Tear it in the middle, I got two equal pieces, all right? Lay it here in my hand, take my pin, that quick draw move, you see that? All right, I got, I got some moves. All right, here we go. Put that in the middle. I don't know how tight you guys can come in, but that's a perfect ear. I'll do it again. Here I am right here, kind of tight. I taper it in both ends, fat in the middle. I call this shape a mustache. I was at a high school class recently, and the guy told me that shape was called a joint. And I'm not familiar. It must be a physics term like parallelogram or something. Okay, here we go. There's the ear. I put a hole in first for the ear to stick into. And that's called a male-female joint, like putting a plug into a light socket. Makes it stronger. I put the end of the ear. Oh, yeah. Major, major stubborn donkey thing going here. Mm -hmm. Oh, good ear. Good ear. Do it some again on this side. All right. There's my stubborn donkey ear. Here comes just a little bit of mane. Lions have manes, and horses have manes. And now this wild ass here has a mane. Okay. Alrighty. Now, here comes the mortar board, or graduation hat, all right? We roll a ball. Easy enough, right? Slap it down so it's flat on the bottom. Flat bottoms are in this season, my wife told me, all right? There is the skull cap. Here comes the mortar board itself. I'm going to use one of my rolly tools here. I'm going to roll over this, then I'll take a knife before they're outlawed. When only outlaws have knives, I'll be an outlaw. Okay, here we go. I'll make this square. Water again, and I put the mortar board right on the top. So now, right before your very eyes, I have turned into a smart ass. No, I meant I turned a smart ass. Okay, one or the other. Oh, forgot to pay attention to detail. All right, there's the butt crack of dawn right there, so we know where the rear is. We take just a little bit of clay. Donkeys have relatively short tails. Some animals, of course, they're much longer. Donkeys are short. The tail is an extension of the backbone. Again, water is our adhesive. I do the little skinny tail coming off the backbone, fitting right into the cleavage of the buttocks. And I turn it up, give it a little movement there. And the end of the tail is kind of frayed, hairy, fuzzy, as it were. Now, I had told you that uh, this is the donkey they went to college and then you would just take a little string like you see here with this one and that would be his uh, graduation um, tassel I believe it's called a lot of uh, people love to put these up in the ruby mirrors I don't know why all right and then mothers and grandmothers love to have them too and they, they're different colors in different schools all right so there's your tassel now this one doesn't have one because I won't do it until after it's fired in the kiln I don't have but just a couple of minutes left but I mentioned that this was a donkey that went to college, so it was a smart ass. And with a little bit of time I have left, I know you guys were curious, what else can I make? Well, we could roll a cone, sit it flat on the bottom, 
use our proctology stick, go up the bottom and make it hollow. Now, I sell a lot of these at graduation time because their children are graduating high school and college, and it's a little bit of a joke. And I'm going to pull his graduation hat off, and we'll give it, this is the dunce hat. So this would be like a dumb donkey. Now, I think, yes, I do. I brought in these sticks. And so the same concept of the body and what I showed you on board with one, two, three, we'll take the dunce hat off. And if you put these antlers in, it, of course, would be a very horny reindeer. And what we do then is we put a little red ribbon on his neck, and sometimes we hang little balls from the tree or any other Christmassy kind of uh, ornamentation. But I like this guy. All right. Now, quick review in the two minutes that we have left. We did the uh, major shape which was just a large altered ball, but the head on. We did the legs, and we did them like a Z. And there's the hooves over here. Nice shiny hooves. Legs come down, another shiny hoof. We did the long, cute tail over there. We did the mane. And you could make it the reindeer, or you could make it a donkey, depending on your own imagination. Major shape, minor shape, and detail. The ears could be longer, shorter. The eyes can be sleepy or mean. And the smile can be as big as you want your donkey to be smiling. Okay, we're just about out of time for today. I enjoyed working with you. Next week, <coughs> we're going to work with a live model, and I'm going to teach you how to do human anatomy. So one week, you're working with smart asses. And the next week, you're working with beautiful girls with great figures. Go figure. It is my life. It is full. I like it. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back and change this guy around the season. Looking forward to seeing you guys next time when we do human anatomy. Until again, make yourself happy. Make something out of clay. Be creative. Be a smartass. <laughs>